Today we will be talking about how to be successful in your biology IA. The internal assessment is a hands-on experiment that you must research, design, and implement all on your own. Designing your own experiment can be very daunting, and this is something that many students struggle with in the beginning. Today, I really want to break down the process of performing an IA by showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do literature searches, data collection, organization, and processing, as well as giving you advice on forming conclusions and evaluating your work. What I will not be doing is creating a sample IA for you to use. You must do most of the work on your own. All I aim to do is create a scaffolding which you can then use to build off of when performing your own IA. Let's get started. To make things simpler, I have broken down the stages of completing an IA into four parts. Background research, design, data collection and processing, and finally conclusions and evaluations. This video will focus on performing background research. The first step in performing your IA is to determine what topic you want to explore. In order to do this, it must be A, relevant to the IB syllabus, and B, it must have some kind of personal interest. I recommend making a list of your favorite topics from the IB syllabus, as well as some of your hobbies and interests, and then try to see where things line up, and then maybe you can do an investigation into your interests based on the IB syllabus. So here I've made a list of my favorite topics from uh, IB Biology. Uh, this includes anatomy, metabolism, uh, neurons, blood flow, and muscle cells. So anything related to those topics I'm really interested in. Now, in my free time, I really like exercising and playing music. Academically, I'm also really interested in learning and memory. So if I wanted to do an investigation into these topics, all I have to do is connect some of uh, the topics from the IB syllabus and relate them to my hobbies and interests. For example, exercise uh, increases blood flow to certain areas of your body, it requires the use of muscles, uh, as well as neurons that coordinate the movement of your muscles. It increases your metabolism, and it also relies on anatomy. So exercise is very closely related to all of these topics. On the other hand, uh, learning and memory is very closely related to neurons, right? Our neurons are in our brains. They are responsible for storing that memory inside of our heads. Now, blood flow is also important to learning and memory because uh, blood delivers oxygen to our neurons and allows them to function. Uh, this is tied very closely to metabolism as well as the anatomy of our brain. So maybe I can do some kind of an investigation into exercise and memory. Now I just have to form a research question that I would want to investigate. For example, something along the lines of, does exercise improve memory? Before moving on, we have to identify our variables. So what is this question asking? Well, it's asking, what is the effect of exercise on memory? So first off, we need to identify what our independent variable is. So our independent variable is the variable that we're going to manipulate. It's the variable we're gonna change. And in this case, exercise is our IV. You could imagine that maybe we could split all of our participants up into two groups, maybe one group uh, does exercise, uh, and the other is kind of like a control where there's no exercise. And this shows how we have manipulated our IV. The dependent variable, or the variable that is measured, is going to be, in this case, memory. So memory is our DV. So now that we have identified our IV and our DV, we have to think about how we're going to define these. So we know what exercise is, but we haven't defined what exercise means within the context of the study. For example, we could get our participants to run five laps around a track, and that would be an example of exercise. They could do jumping jacks, they could do squats or some kind of sprint, and these would all be some form of exercise. Memory as the dependent variable is a bit trickier to define in the context of the study. The easiest way to measure memory is in the form of some kind of test. Now, what we're gonna do next is called a literature review, where we're gonna look through a bunch of different scientific articles relating to exercise and memory, and then we're gonna see what other researchers have done in order to inspire our own methodologies. So let's jump back to Excel and let's talk about literature searches and background research. Before you begin designing your experiment, you must do what's called a literature review. A literature review is when you search up a whole bunch of scientific articles on some particular topic, and then you summarize their findings and conclusions. The big idea here is that you want to build a solid context 
for the research that you are studying. Now, unfortunately, most scientific articles cost money to read, but there are a few free peer-reviewed articles if you know where to look. So for example, JSTOR and PubMed are both really good examples of free online databases that contain scientific peer-reviewed articles. So really, these are the two main things you should be using when searching for good articles to use in your lab. Google Scholar is another one of those popular ones that uh, people like to use. Personally, I don't think it's that great because in order to find good quality articles, you have to be very specific in the settings that you use to search. Some of the uh, results from Google Scholar would be things like book chapters, newspaper articles, and then just generally like non-peer reviewed articles, which are not great, right? You don't want that. And then that, like even then, if you do find a peer reviewed article, so many of them are hidden behind a paywall that it's almost useless to use. So for this reason, I strongly recommend avoiding Google Scholar, um, but you know, you can use it if you uh, make your search criteria specific. Now, Wikipedia is a good resource to use, uh, especially when you're starting out. And I'll give an example of how you can use Wikipedia to your advantage. As far as why you should do background research, there are really two main reasons to do a high quality background research before designing your own experiment. Uh, firstly, it'll provide context for your research question. So in other words, what have other researchers done to adjust, address this question in the past? And even more importantly, what is the current scientific consensus? So what do people think right now about this topic? This will help you a lot, especially when you're writing that introduction. And secondly, this is really crucial, it'll help you design your own experiment. So most, uh, I guess one of the most challenging aspects of doing your own exper experiment is actually making the procedure. Uh, for example, you always have to ask yourself, what variables am I trying to control? What instruments will I use? How will I collect data, etc. But if you read how other researchers do their, their own experiments, you can borrow aspects of their procedures, you know, as long as you cite, and then add them into your own uh, research study. Uh, and then finally, uh, this is something uh, to do with how your IA is graded. Uh, it'll show that you demonstrate excellent personal engagement, right? So if you're curious about your topic, you can use the knowledge you gain from an in-depth literature review to make your own personal research design. Like this is a great way to demonstrate personal engagement through your understanding of the topic. Okay, so I'm at the JSTOR home website. So it's jstor.org. And all you have to do to start uh, looking for research articles is going through their advanced search option. So what you're gonna do when you're here is you're gonna fill up the different text box with the keywords that you want to search for. So in this case, we're gonna do exercise, learning, and then maybe we'll add memory. So maybe I'll add an extra search box for memory. Now I've filled out the text boxes. Next, we're gonna select the access type. So this is just gonna be what kind of content you can access. So I only want to see content that I can actually use. Now, if I want to even narrow, make my search results more narrow, I can specify that I want to look at only articles and reviews. I really don't want to look at books. And I only want articles in the English language. But apart from that, I, I don't really care about where journal comes from. So let's go to our submit advanced search button here at the bottom. And as you can see, we have a lot of results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this list and I'm going to choose a couple of articles and I'm going to save them to that Excel file I showed you earlier. I'll be right back when I've finished. As you can see here, I've set up something called a literature matrix. This is something that we use to organize all of the different research studies that we're gonna be referencing in our experiment. So I've only collected two. And basically what we have here is I have the citation in APA format in, up at the top here. I've written a very brief summary of the research article. And then I also indicated how it is connected to the IB syllabus. So as you can see here, this first one is from the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in the United, in, of the United States of America. And the title is Exercise Training Increases Size of Hippocampus and Improves Memory. So this was an interesting study that talked about how, uh, well, first it mentioned that exercise increases perfusion, which is blood flow to the hippocampus, which is a brain area associated with memory. Uh, then it also specified something important for our design is that cardio or aerobic exercise has the largest effect uh, on this perfusion. So for our design, we're going to have to do some kind of cardio based on the literature in this area. It also suggested that exercise uh, can combat 
the decline in hippocampal volume that is associated with aging. So again, not exactly relevant to our study, but I just thought that was interesting. And if I was actually going to be doing an experiment, I would have to do a much more in-depth summary of this research article's findings and do a bit better job of connecting it to the syllabus. Now, the second article here is called The Hippocampal Vascular Reserve Associated with Cognitive Performance and Hippocampal Volume. This one talks about how blood flow to the brain, or a lack thereof, can affect uh, cognitive performance. So again, I wrote a very, very brief and even incomplete summary, so I recommend going back and doing an actual summary of your own, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So this is a literature matrix, and I definitely recommend you keeping one, uh, just so you stay nice and organized as you collect more and more studies. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for today, everybody. We talked about background research and why it's important and how it contributes to your grade. We've also gone over how to create a literature matrix and why it's important to keep one. It helps us organize all of the different research studies we're gonna use in our write-up. Next time, we're gonna talk about the design of an experiment and how we can use what we learned from background research to inform our design and show personal engagement with the process. All right, I'll see you guys next time.